Hi, Story Wilson with rswsolutions.com. Today we're going to go over some of the steps to recalibrate an air suspension on the L322 Range Rover, full-size Range Rover chassis. Now please remember that the L322 chassis is in the model years of 2002 through 2012, roughly. And across those years, you have two major manufacturers with this chassis. You have the Ford vehicles and the BMW vehicles. You need to know the difference between those two vehicles. The BMW class of vehicles, you'll use the all comms software to recalibrate the air suspension heights. And with the Ford series of vehicles, you will use the 4D CAN software tool. Today we're going to be using the 4D CAN software tool because this is a 2012 L322 chassis Range Rover. So to begin, we really um, are not going to need too many materials. You're going to, of course, need the 4D CAN tool and the hardware. We're going to need a tape measure. Uh, I prefer a tape measure in millimeters. It just It's a lot easier to get very precise measurements. Uh, and uh, we're going to need some tape and a pen. And I'll go ahead and show you the steps right now. So, before we begin, I've got my measuring tape and my masking tape and a pen. Now, it's important that we, we're going to pull up the diagnostic tool next, the 4D CAN software tool, and we're going to put the air suspension into what's called tight tolerance mode. Now, under normal operation, the air suspension will allow a certain degree of variability between each corner, a certain degree of let's just call it slop or play and I think it's somewhere around a half an inch to an inch before the air suspension will attempt to correct that corner. Now that's nice for driving around and for everyday life because you don't want the air suspension constantly adjusting itself every single time you're on an incline or taking a corner or sitting at a stoplight. But for a calibration we do want it to be in what's called tight tolerance mode so that we can really, so we make sure that we're, we're adjusting the calibration, we're adjusting a height difference because of the calibration and not just because of the built-in slop that the system operates with. So, let's go ahead and put the vehicle in tight tolerance mode first. To so use the 4D CAN software tool, uh, you obviously need the software purchased from RSW Solutions through my website. Uh, you need a simple Elm Wi-Fi device, really common, very simple. In the 2012 Range Rover made by Ford, the diagnostic port is right here. On the BMWs, it's more right here above the uh, hood release. Simply insert the device, the Elm device, into the diagnostic port. It powers up, and we'll go ahead and connect to it with the PC. This is the 4D CAN software tool that I've developed, and we're going to connect to the vehicle. We have our Elm 327 Wi-Fi device connected to the vehicle, and the vehicle engine is running. Let's open up our communication session here. Let's try to attempt to connect with the Wi-Fi device, and we get a response. Elm 327 version 1.5, we're good to go. Now, earlier model Land Rovers, you use this tab. Later model Land Rovers by Ford, you'll use this tab. This is a 2012, so we're going to use the 2010 onward, and we're going to set the vehicle into tight tolerance mode start by opening communications with the vehicle we get a green status light now we're going to turn on tight tolerance mode and that's done again make sure you turn off tight tolerance mode when we're complete with the calibration procedures you cannot leave the vehicle in tight tolerance mode it will prematurely start to wear things out because the vehicle is constantly making adjustments to the air suspension heights. So now let's proceed on to performing our physical measurements. Before, one last thing you might consider doing, uh, I will usually start the vehicle, raise the suspension up, and then lower it back down to normal height. This kind of gives the suspension a chance to reach the target suspension values while in tight tolerance mode so that you are in the most accurate physical world representation of your calibration and when you're in tight tolerance mode. So to begin the calibration process, we need to take a series of measurements that will establish our baseline. Now a calibration procedure, what we're doing is we're really, some people get confused on this, we are making a relationship between the physical measurement, between the hub, center, and the wheel arch we're making a relationship between this physical measurement 
and the values of the height sensors for each corner. Now when you work with the software, you'll get values for the height sensors. Those don't mean anything in the real world, really. Those aren't, it's not, you know, the, the, the numbers will be something like 170 for the front left corner. That doesn't mean 170 millimeters or 170 inches. It doesn't mean anything. It's just that we need, to, this is what we're doing. We're calibrating it. We're relating, making a, a, a relationship between the physical measurements and the calibration numbers. So, first thing we do is we take some tape. Masking tape's fine. Make a little mark. Try to make it right there on the wheel arch. And I take my measuring tape, put it right there in the center of the hub. To go right up to the arch there, and we are about five, four, 498 millimeters. 498 millimeters. So we're going to write that number down. And we're going to repeat that process for each of the wheels. Then we're going to go to the software and make some changes to the calibration. Okay, so we performed the measurements on all four corners just as I demonstrated. And this is my little Land Rover drawing here. We want to keep track of these measurements. 498, 490, 470, and 480. Now, I believe we're uh, looking at about a 19 and a half inches is normal. This, these should be the normal measurements uh, for the, the vehicle. The rear is just a little bit lower, like a half an inch lower. So that's about normal. You'd expect the rear to be about 10 to 12 millimeters lower. Uh, 498, 490, eh, I'm not so worried about that. This, I'd like to level this out a bit. Let's see if we can get um, these maybe around 475. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the software and for the, uh, the left rear, we'll, uh, we'll raise this by maybe uh, three or four points and, and we'll, the right rear will lower it by three or four points. Go ahead and write those calibration numbers and come back and see what the measurements, uh, the real world measurements, see how they've changed. We're ready to begin our calibration procedures now that we have our physical measurements and we, we know what we're going to try to accomplish. So first let's open communications with the air suspension computer. Let's get the current values. Now you see the current values here are a number. Now again this number is not any kind of real world measurement. This is the target sensor value that the air suspension will, will attempt to reach. Right? But we know that the real world measurements of these values this 187 is actually 498 millimeters. So there's not a one-to-one -one relationship. So our goal, as we discussed, was to, we wanted to raise the left rear and lower the right rear so maybe they're a little bit closer to each other in their calibration number. So let's go ahead and let's just change a small value here. Let's raise this by three, so 184. Lower this by three, 170. And we're gonna write those changes. Wait for the commands to go through, and we're complete. Now, we've, we've, we've written these new changes. We're going to um, close communications. Now we're going to start the engine, raise the suspension, lower the suspension back down to normal height. Again, so the suspension has a chance to reach these target values again, kind of from a fresh uh, you know, movement cycle here especially because we just made small, small changes. We want to make sure, because sometimes the small changes, the air suspension won't even bother to make that change. And realistically, I wouldn't even bother to make these kinds of adjustments. It's just for demonstration purposes. A difference of two or three, you know, a difference of five or six millimeters between side to side, not that big of a deal. So and then we'll go back out and we'll perform the physical measurements again and see what changes we've made in the physical world with these digital calibration number changes. So we went ahead and made those calibration changes as shown on the video to the air suspension computer, the calibration values. We raised this value and we lowered this one and went back and you, then you re-perform those same measurements. That's why you have the tape with the pen marks so that you can perform roughly the same measurement every time. And these came back at about four, the secondary measurements about 477 and 475 and that's perfectly fine. So that is basically outlining the steps on how to perform the calibration. Basically what is involved is taking physical measurements, 
modifying those digital equivalents on each corner, the calibration numbers, writing those values, and then going back and checking them and seeing how much you changed each one of these numbers. And you, you, you perform the calibration in small steps, one at a time, and always go back and revalidate your physical measurements. And that's it. Hopefully this was enough information to get people moving in the right direction on calibration. Remember, final thoughts, always perform the calibration on a vehicle that is parked on a level surface. You also want to make sure the vehicle engine is running if you're uh, you know, trying to do this kind of work over a long period of time. You don't want to run the battery flat. Make sure the air suspension is in perfect opera you know, functional operation. You can't perform this if there's faults in the air suspension. And uh, in general, just take your time take consistent measurements and good notes. Good luck. And of course, don't forget, as mentioned previously, once you're done with your calibrations, restore the suspension to normal function. Remove the tight tolerance mode. You absolutely do not want to drive around in tight tolerance mode. Once you've established normal tolerance mode and go ahead and close communications out, you're ready to go. Hopefully that was helpful.